When John Wilker's not fixing cars, jogging around town, or deep sea diving, he's here in his lab at Purdue University studying mussels and oysters and how they do what they do, stick to things underwater. See how you have this cluster of them all stuck to each other? So one of the reasons that we study mussels and barnacles and oysters is they produce interesting materials. So for instance, if, say, a mussel wants to stick itself to a rock, what it'll do is it'll secrete an adhesive material. This guy here is stuck to this guy. If a predator, like a seagull or something, wants to come by and try and pull one of these out of the crowd because it's stuck to all the other animals, then uh, it's, it's harder for the predators to get at it. Wilker is a materials chemist funded by the National Science Foundation trying to invent a breakthrough adhesive, a synthetic glue that works like the substance oysters and mussels secrete. If you think about most of the adhesives that you buy at the hardware store, they don't set underwater. If you want to glue two things together, usually you do that and the first thing you have to do is wait for the adhesive to dry out. An adhesive that could adhere to and bind wet surfaces would have the greatest potential impact in medicine, especially surgery. So we're hoping there's some significance in our research. So for instance, as we learn how nature makes materials, we can then use that information to develop applications such as surgical adhesives and bone cements. Surgical adhesives that could be an alternative to stitches or sutures, which Wilker notes are actually a fairly primitive way to close wounds or surgical cuts. So if you think of, for instance, sutures, right, you might bring together some soft tissue, maybe skin, um, but then you have to poke holes into, it, into the healthy tissue in order to, to tie things together. And so, first of all, that's traumatic to the healthy tissue. Secondly, that creates um, a bunch of sites that could increase the chance of picking up an infection. Sealing wounds or cuts with adhesive would be less damaging to the body. Inside the laboratory, Wilker and his team analyzed the sticky substance made by mussels. Why not simply harvest the natural material for use as an adhesive? Well, only a small amount of the sticky substance can be isolated from each muscle. There's really not much material there at all, tiny, tiny amounts. And so if you wanted, say, to isolate a gram of this adhesive, you need about 10,000 muscles. Wilker and his team need to synthesize a similar substance to get an adhesive that could be mass produced and tailored for specific uses. And that means engineering a synthetic material that mimics the chemical, the molecular structure of what the marine organisms produce. It's a little like trying to duplicate a stack of wood blocks with plastic blocks. There's a limit to how much wood we can get from nature, while today plastic blocks can be made cheaply and in large number. But to most closely mimic the stack of natural materials, the synthetic pieces have to be the same shape as the wood blocks and stack the same way. And so what we'll do is learn how to combine molecules, for instance, into a polymer. Polymers are long, chain-like molecules composed of repeating monomers, small molecules linked or bonded together in a pattern like a wallpaper motif. Synthetic polymers are common building blocks for new materials. They're what make up most plastics. We isolate those materials after we do the synthesis, and then with those materials, those new materials that we just made, those we can then assess the bonding capability. Since this new synthetic adhesive has the same chemistry as the naturally occurring adhesive that mussels make underwater, it can be engineered to set when it's wet. That's a really, really difficult thing to do with synthetic materials. The synthetic adhesives not only work to bond materials in wet conditions, they can be engineered to create bonds of different strengths and to bond different materials, metal to metal, bone to bone. In the lab, they use samples of pig bone. We can take them onto the instrument over in the other room and pull them apart. So, yeah. A materials testing machine then measures the bond strength, the units of force or newtons it takes to pull the two materials apart. And there's the breaking point. Yeah. Make it help. 549.66 newtons. Some of these things actually adhere really quite well. So for instance, we have some uh, polymers that are modeled after muscle adhesive and these adhesives actually can bond surfaces together as strongly as superglue. So we have very high strength adhesion from mimics of the biological materials. Wilker hopes his synthetic adhesive can be developed into a new bio-based bone cement for use in orthopedic surgery to set broken bones, affix metal supports and plates, in some cases doing it without screws. 
At this stage, we certainly don't have any products that are out there, but we've got, uh, we've got some materials that are exhibiting a lot of promise for eventual applications development. Setting the stage for future advances in chemistry, discovery of new materials, invention of new products. The percentage of things in the universe that we know is tiny compared to what we don't know. And even beyond just learning about what's out there, you have the opportunity to make new things.